Things were changing, but very slowly. England was a small country, still bound by Victorian tradition and firmly divided into classes. A conservative atmosphere prevailed in which children expected to do what their parents had done and to be the sort of people they were. So when Skiffle died and Bill Haley went home, most kids resigned themselves to the kind of inoffensive pop music their parents had liked. Everything returned to normal. Or so it seemed. The 200 mile distance from London to Liverpool might have been 2,000 as far as Liverpudlians were concerned. Once England's busiest shipping port, Liverpool had become, by 1960, a provincial outpost economically depressed and quite devoid of any glamour or expectation. Yet while the rest of Britain returned to the safe sounds of Cliff Richard and Helen Shapiro, teenagers in Liverpool kept listening to American rock and roll. Rock and roll struck a responsive chord among Liverpool's tough, working-class youth. A seed had been planted, one which would soon bear unexpected fruit. As rock and roll spread throughout Merseyside, young boys began trading in their skiffle kits for electric guitars and professional drum sets. They formed groups with names like Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, the Rocking Rhythm Coasters, and King Size Taylor and the Dominoes, and began to play this American music wherever they could. The thriving club scene soon developed, one without precedent anywhere in England. By mid-1961, when somebody finally bothered to count, there were 273 groups in Liverpool and more than 300 clubs. But of all these groups, few dreamt of fame beyond Liverpool, and even fewer of making a living playing this music. At least, not until one group caught the eye of a local record store owner. The Beatles were then just four lads on that rather dimly lit stage, uh, somewhat ill-clad, and the presentation was, well, left a little to be desired as far as I was concerned. But amongst all that, something tremendous came over. We're shaking a baby now. Shaking a baby. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. Ryan Epstein had high hopes for his new group, the Beatles, and he set about creating an image for them to equal those aspirations. Even so, he had a hard time convincing the London music establishment that anything exciting could come from Liverpool. Yet as the Beatles toured the English provinces, word began to spread, and the excitement grew to undeniable proportions. Bye. 
almost overnight, a phenomenon beyond anyone's imagination was born. The Beatles looked and sounded unlike anything that had come before. At last, British kids had a music all their own. 